It does not matter if you're on two wheels or four, there's only one guy in this world who can hook you up with the best exhaust for your engine. His name is a little bit popular, you might have heard of it. It's a Krapovich. Don't believe me? Okay, let's see what the world's most likable person, Lemmy, has got to say. A Krapovich is the premium exhaust line in the world. There's nothing as fine as an Akrapovich exhaust. Told you. Are you going to trust me now? This is Akrapovich unwrapped. The year is 1977 and Slovenian Igor Akrapovic turns 18. He has the choice to either go and work for his father in the plastic molding industry, boring, or go whoop some ass racing. Do you want to have a guess which one he went for? He of course goes racing and starts in 250cc, two strokes, and then upgrading to 1000cc, four strokes. Igor always took care of the technical side of his bikes um, on his own, and soon he caught the attention of his other racer friends asking him to tune their bikes. In 1990, after 10 years of racing, he hangs up his racing suit and opens up his own tuning shop called Scorpion. He specializes in tuning, reconditioning and race preparing. He quickly becomes the go-to guy for Kawasaki's, Honda RC30s and then Ducati's. But something was bothering him quite a lot. He realized that the available exhausts available at the day were What's the technical term for it? Shit. Higher quality Western aftermarket exhausts were far too expensive and the Eastern Bloc's exhausts were, let's say, inadequate. What does he do? Well, like a badass, he makes his own. After six months, he invests considerable money into buying a pipe bending machine and he gets to work. He tinkers, develops and leverages engine tuning experience. His exhausts were light, performance boosting, cleverly arranged and affectionately crafted. Nothing more, nothing less. Word soon got out and more and more racers and teams became customers. But it's in 1993 when he scores his big break. He convinces Kawasaki Deutschland to test one of his exhausts by racing it at the Pro Superbike Championship. They liked it. Then they raced it in the Superbike World Championship and their ZXR750 lapped the Hockenheim circuit significantly faster than the official factory bike. Now they really liked it. At that stage, Igor's reputation was cemented, and less than two years later, all Japanese manufacturers were using Scorpion exhausts at the Superbike World Championship. This, of course, skyrocketed the reputation of Scorpion, but it also attracted the attention of Ford's lawyers, who found the Scorpion name to be too similar to their heap of shit Ford Scorpio this thing. Alas, Igor didn't have an army of lawyers, so he yielded, and in 1997 he changed it to his own name, and thus Akrapovich was born. At this stage, Akrapovich exhausts were selling themselves like hotcakes, especially in Germany. With strong growth in sales as high as 70% per annum, it was time to pack and move from their tiny workshop to a proper factory six times as big. In 2000, after prototyping 54 designs for Honda, Colin Edwards on a VTR1000 SPO1 completely whoops ass and hands Akrapovich their first world championship title. The same year, in the 600 SS class, an Acura fitted Yamaha also wins. With more money in the bank, Igor decides to reinvest money into the company, pushing R&D into the next level. In 2002, his exhausts make their entry into the MotoGP series. No biggie at this point. And, and in 2004, the company looks at a Formula One car and thinks, hmm, well, how hard can it be? And only a few years later, they completely develop and equip a Formula One car with an Akrapovich exhaust. At the same time, they pioneer the use of exotic materials such as Inconel, which I can barely pronounce. And that was a big step ahead of titanium, which in itself was a massive step ahead of what everyone else was using. In 2008, a 911 sporting their exhaust won at the Nürburgring. And with such a victory on their CV, Acra felt far more comfortable starting to make exhausts for cars as well. At this stage, partnerships were offered left and right, with Yamaha and BMW Motorrad fitting their exhausts as standard on some of their models. 
Audi's LMP1 and DTM were particularly keen. And really, when you got Koenigsegg knocking on your door to develop an exhaust for their hypercar, you've done pretty well. In 2009, Akrapovic pushes the envelope even further and launches their own in-house titanium foundry. And this puts them leagues ahead of everyone else, as now they can control the production from the initial molecular level all the way to the finished product. From officially setting up the company in the early 90s armed with Slauko, a tinkering electrician, and Marco as a sales guy, the names are not a joke, it's really true, <laughs> to today a company with over a thousand employees, Igor has done the impossible. He built a brand that commands respect in all four corners of the world and in every discipline from Dakar to LMP1. And it all started with a man crazy about motorcycles. That is all you need to know about Akrapovich. Please make sure you subscribe and please share it with a friend you hate so you can waste their time. If you like this format, please let me know what you'd like to see next. If you don't like my face, let me know in the comments. If you want me to go kill myself, please in the comments let me know how. <laughs> Right, have a good one, watch my other videos, and see you on the next one.